Hello everybody and welcome back to Wappleville. We got another live stream for you. And this is something from Succubus Publishing. You can see their logo down in the corner. I believe they've got a Kickstarter campaign going on right now. It's for these miniatures. The bases are actually something different. It's just something I've been actually itching to try. And these anime, somewhat anime style figures just kind of seem to work with these bases. Plus you get little lanterns here which means we could potentially do some maybe some object source lighting on these guys. And there's a several different types here. Like I said, I altered the bases. They're, I don't know what the game system is. I can't answer any questions about the games or the miniature or anything like that. I can only just uh, paint these guys and that's what we're gonna do. And I also have, just for the heck of it here, there's some Reaper colors that must have just came home from ReaperCon with me. I mean, there's there's even this one, just whatever. It seemed to go well with this color scheme that if you see the pictures here, especially the one in the lower right-hand corner, so some purples, some whatever. Uh, then we got a couple of our clear paints that I <clears throat> always seem to forget to use here, like this. Like our magenta, thalo green. Kathy uses these all the time. I kind of forget. Look at this. We got Thunderhead Studio in the house. Folks, well, I'm sure you're probably one of the few people in here, so I won't do the usual spiel. I mean, you can shout yourself out too. But uh, I'm sorry, I, I know you were live earlier today, I think, and I basically missed everybody the last couple of days because I was busy prepping all of these today and the thing for Friday. So this was kind of distracting me massively. Hopefully everything's been okay and you've been able to continue doing your streams, which are always very fun. Over here, so on the palette here, I don't even know what these are. I have no clue. Other than this is the thalo green and that's the clear magenta. I think this one is that that hottest pink right there. Oh, look at this. We got Armored Wolf in the house too. Yeah, a little, little bit of late night action here before the Friday craziness. So this one here, I'm not sure I ever even used this thing. And I think I have used this once or twice. That's sitting over here. This one's actually, it's probably the closest thing to the old amethyst blue, I think, that I used to like a lot. And then there's this one, bubblegum pink. I might have used it once or something like that. And then what's this one here? This one, this carnival purple that's sitting over here. I don't think I've ever used this. What this reminds me of is, is violet liner. That's what this thing reminds me of sitting right over here. That is pretty darn similar to that violet liner, yeah. These, I don't even know if I've got them both out in the palette. They seem kind of similar here. I mean, Dead Rose and Briar Rose, I think this one might be... Well, let's open this up and see. Yeah, that, okay, that's this one over here. Not even sure this one made it out. What, what does this even look like here? I have no idea. Oh, maybe this one made it out too. Okay, I guess it did. I just saw the... Oh, and here's another thing too. I was looking for something else and I saw this. And people are always asking me about, do I use this stuff? And I always say no. And I, let's just throw it out here. That's what's sitting in this little watercolor do thingy over here. So what the heck. Now there's this one here. I think I might have messed with this once at ReaperCon. Because I just... I guess I was in need of some paint colors. I just grabbed a handful, and this happened to be in the handful. So we'll just play with those. Now, these bases here, actually, a good friend of mine printed these out for me. Now I can maybe get to print out some of these things myself. But there's, a, like, three different designs. I think there's two larger ones, and there's maybe three of these smaller ones here. I just printed out on a, on a Mars, as always. I think there's another... Yeah, so... These are two of my favorites. I did add a couple of GW skulls on there just for grins, for the heck of it. But I think we'll maybe play with this one here and, and see what we can do to maybe match this reference that's down here and what's over there. Lots of pinks and whatever. Let's see what we got focus-wise. Ah, uh, you know what? <laughs> this is going to be very fun doing film noir. We got Steela in the house. How are you doing? We have a little something different here after all the oil stuff. Oh, and Numbskull, too. 
I have no idea what these are, what this is all about. All I know is that they were... I was supposed to paint these things, and we'll, we'll just mess around with it here and see what happens. Now, I will grab... Well, what are we going to grab here? This is going to... It's going to be interesting because this is none of the usual suspects right here. This is all just totally different colors. Haven't really used them at all. And we're just going to play with them, see what happens. We'll see if these, yeah, you know, if they act at all like some of our beloved clear and liner paints do. It'll be like a semi-glazy kind of thing. What is this called here? The one that I it, it acts like the old violet line, a carnival purple. Okay. Like I said, I'm just gonna start messing around with stuff here and see what the heck happens. I have no idea what, what's going to happen. We got M. Tilly's in the house. But you got to figure, like like you're saying there, this has to be a fairly decent chance to break out the bright stuff. Yes, I was tempted to do the oil thing, but I'll just I'll keep it here with the acrylics, especially since I saw these Reaper colors. I went, well, what the heck? Let, let's just play around with these, see what happens here. Because... The, the weekend is definitely going to be a big old oil extravaganza because tomorrow I have to do that Aces of Painting thing. That's going to start uh, somewhere in the, like between 6 and 7 o'clock Central, I think. That's the, the Gen Con thing. Uh, I, it seems like people won't be on camera terribly long. Like, I think each of us will be featured on camera for seven minutes or something. I don't really... Don't ask me about the specifics. I never know these things. All I know is that I was assembling the Thanos miniature, whatever that was, and his crazy altar thing. Uh, this, is, this is the hottest pink. It says it's the hottest pink. We're going to mix it with this. And we'll just <laughs> we'll start throwing it out or who the heck cares. Who cares? Uh, let me see. I've got some wind and some Newton oils picked up for an unrelated project and some white spirits. Uh, I think... Uh, oh, and Bethany in the house. How are you doing? Hopefully the inner... Well, actually, hopefully the internet behaves for both of us because, as you know, sometimes in these We Hour streams... Weird things happen. Weird things can happen. So this is that bubblegum stuff and the hottest pink. Well, oh, let's do a little bit of that clear magenta in there too. I mean, whatever. Who cares? It's just freaking paint. It's not... A, it, it, oh, actually, there's a little bit of a symbol of some kind on there. What it is, I don't know. But we'll just we'll play around with as many kinds of. Well, I mean, she'll look like some Laffy Taffy or something by the time this thing is over with. Uh, I guess maybe we'll just go with some more purple type tones in the hair. And I'm just gonna be chucking colors around here until something just says, "Yeah, keep it this," or "Ah, let's make it this." Uh, let's see. Uh, my Michaels is still closed. Um, well, in our neighborhood, a little different story, but yeah, it, it's. I just, I just wish we could do like some other places could do and recall mayors. That would be so nice. That that is what we need. Well, actually, it wouldn't matter because you would be replacing one corrupt person with another. Because if you go 10, 12, 13, 14 levels down, it's nothing but corruption. So, actually, I don't think it would make a darn bit of difference. So, who cares? <laughs> I just, I'll just sit here in my little Twitch bunker and do this. Now, let's go with this straight up. What the heck is this called? Carnival Purple here. And let's, uh, yeah, yeah, let's do this for the hair. Because purple. I'm actually. Oh, you know what? What was this stuff called again? 
Rich Indigo, which is so funny because what was our new favorite oil color? Indigo. Oh, hey, In Inganes, how are you doing? Uh, let's see. I think that is everybody. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, well, I'll show you what we did last on the oil painting thing. Now, that was Monday night, right? That was a regular Monday night. Then we did a late night session, well, pfft, late night, early morning, because that one went about almost six hours. I, I got to sleep at seven in the freaking morning. That was, that was not super bueno. But I'll show you what we got done, because we were working on some more of those Song of Ice and Fire Horsemen. And I'll show you that in just a second. I just want to get some of this... Oh, what the heck? Who cares? We'll just have it go over the face. Why am I screwing around here? Good enough. It's just that initial glaze. And as we let that dry for a second, we're going to snag our horsies. Yeah, archers. So remember, we did this one on Monday night, and then in the <laughs> the late night, mostly early morning session on Tuesday, we did the, the rest of these guys here. Get the heck out of my way. There we go. And, oh, yeah. And these are all dry, by the way. That is the other fun thing. Ah, oh, Steela just got indigo today. Oh, thanks, Tim Tellies. Yeah, this is all dry. All this, it's, it's, it's not just tacky dry, this is bone dry. These are completely bone dry. And these were only finished at 7 o'clock Tuesday, no, Wednesday morning. And, and that's uh, totally bone dry. So that, once again, that uh, I was talking about how, you know, the minimal oil type thing. Yeah, that's actually a neat little... That's kind of a neat color there. You know what? Let's hit this with some of the... That rich indigo, whatever that's called. Now here we got some bamboo stuff going on. It's kind of a whole Japanese garden look. Oh, sepia liner. Yeah, let's throw some of that out there. We need one of our favorites out here. Let's throw you out there. We'll let you mix with a couple of other things here like that red ish color uh, yes it in the house uh, yeah I'm telling you I, I wish I could be falling asleep right now I could I could use just some major sleep time right now that that whole day was really funky afterwards I gotta say that getting to get in the bed at 7 in the freaking morning that was uh that was intense. I'm just going to throw some of this here. Let's grab a little bit of this uh, kind of dark brown here. Chuck that into this. Just let these things mix together. I went into this with new preconceived color ideas or anything like that. Uh, I think you turned down your volume because mine should be totally normal here. I've got it set... Actually, I've got it set louder than it was the other day. The other day, somehow, I got set to sort of quiet. Uh, let's see, I'm telling you, we're supposed to finish the Indominus Marines, but we'll save that for tomorrow stream. Uh, yeah, seven, eight, uh, the first three days and first two of every month, I only sleep about three hours a night, if at all. Yeah, that is, uh, that is the wonder of self-employment, that's for sure. <laughs> Quaint ideas like sleep and all that sort of stuff. Those, yeah, those just go out the window. Those go away. No such thing. Laugh and smirk at those who do stuff like sleep. Okay, we've got some of that played out now. 
What do we want to do here? How much more reddish do we want that to be? So I'll throw a little bit of that drying retarder in there too, just for the heck of it. You know, actually, okay, we'll go with this one here again. Some of that drying retarder. Ooh, we'll throw a little bit of the magenta in there as well. It's all going to be very translucent. In some ways, it's going to be a little bit like oils because it's going to be quite translucent. And I'm thinking maybe we'll we'll have lots of color shifts on this. It won't just be, okay, lighter shades of this magenta-ish purple color or whatever. I think we'll have some, maybe some blues work their way into this too. But let's see if we can maybe try a little wet into wet here. Oh, got some Star Wars Loth Cats. I'm going to fool around with oils on. Oh, yeah, it's, it really, what is it? Think long, think wrong, right? You really can. I've, just, I've seen people talk themselves out of so many great ideas. They'll just say, oh, well, no, no, I can't. That's not going to work. I can't do that. Instead of just, okay, the heck with it. I'm just doing it. I'm just going to do it. Yeah, deadline season happens. Uh, yeah, deadlines here, most definitely a constant thing. That's for sure. No doubt about that. Basically, well, every hour of every day, pretty much, is a deadline here. There is no non-deadline times. Now, there will be maybe some times that I have to throw on my brighter lights. Because it looks like this light is very bright. To me, I'm actually virtually painting in the dark right now. It's just so that you guys can see things a little bit better without stuff getting burned out. Because it makes a huge, boom, difference. Yeah, you can see difference that makes there. Now, laugh in insomnia. I just want to make sure. Okay, I think we're all caught up here now. So this is that that hottest pink. We'll work some more of this in here. Now, I used to, what was it, flow improver. That's the stuff I used to use. Right, if anything, I'm just curious to see, does this drying retarder actually do anything? I have no clue. It's been so long. I probably used it at one point, but it's been so long that I've just completely forgotten. Still, I would much rather be using the oils for this instead of screwing around with some kind of whatever. Mediums. Mediums just kind of... For me, they just sort of get in the way, basically. They stand in the way of progress. Now, what was... Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take this and... A bit of our white over here. Let me get to my... Oh, actually... No, it's just uh, this. It's just drying retarder. I just, as I was... I basically just grabbed a handful of stuff that was left over from, must have been from a couple of Reprocons ago. It was just sitting in a bag. So I just, uh, I just grabbed a bunch of them. Let's, let's play around here. Let's do, so this is how one of my latest videos was filmed. All right, color is gone. Except for the color that's over here. Yeah, that, that's going to be more, that's way more fun. That is way more fun because where'd you go? Here you are. When I filmed this video right here, this guy was filmed entirely in black and white. And then towards the end, what they saw was this. But it was filmed like this. Except they could see the palette. They could see at the end of certain segments, they could see what was going on. But we're going to paint this way. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is what we're going to do. Because I think this will be... I don't know. My stream. My rules. Oh, I don't use any of that stuff for oils. You don't need it for oils. It's just... 
and I don't eat it for acrylics either. You just, people are constantly talking about it, and they're constantly asking me about it. And I just say, I don't use them. And they're always asking why not, and I say, I don't know. I, they're not in front of my face. I just use water. Water's good enough. Now, maybe part of that is because I used to be a watercolor artist. So water was all we had to work with. There were no mediums or anything like that. It was just it was just water. So you, we didn't really rely on anything of that sort. You know what? Let's just see if we can't create some kind of a crazy little bit of skin tone here for this. Instead of purple arms, let's give her something that vaguely resembles the skin tone. And I think that is the... That's about it for areas of skin tone. Not that you can really see. And, and for folks that are new here, don't adjust your TV sets. Uh, let's see, IPA and drops of glycerin. Uh, what was it uh, when the contrast paints came out? Oh, it was it was Goober Town. That was it was it was Goober Town that was messing around with some stuff to try and make his own version of the contrast paints. I remember that. That was that was over a year ago. Gee whiz, that was 13 months ago now. Uh, let's see, I pretty pretty much acrylic oil imitation medium. Uh, oh, we got land dressed in the house. Uh, yes, I have a commission painter on staff. He always tells me there's no rules. Just do what's good. Looks what's good to you. It it really it, now. There's a few. There's some basic tenants of, of lights and darks and that sort of thing. But when it comes to some of these things pe people get a little bit crazy with the whole the, you, you've got to do this or else I'm not quite sure how that happened but there is definitely an awful lot of people that want to lay down rules I, I guess it makes them maybe sound a little more authoritative as a teacher or something I don't know I, I don't know this is that, that hottest pink color again that we're just, uh, we'll keep messing around with here. We'll see if we want to do some object source lighting from our little Chinese lantern there, or whatever it is. Which means we don't want these getting too light. Where is this? Ah, here it is. There's our nice dark purple here. Let's hit these things with that darker purple. What's that called again? Carnival purple. Uh, let's see, I've been using contrast for most of my projects. Yeah, well, again, in art school, that stuff was rather forcibly beaten out of you. You, There was no brush licking allowed at the Academy of Art. That was just derision, ridicule, any means necessary to get you out of any such habit of licking brushes that was employed. Uh, let's see, I've been using contrast for most of my products. Ah, so that's, uh, that's interesting. We have another one of our little bots or whatever you want to call those guys. It's been a while since we had one of those. Here, let's chuck in a little bit more of a some darker tones here on the on the base while we're at it. It's interesting how some of these colors have just kind of settled into and then dried a little bit darker. Yeah, we've mixed a whole lot of them together here. I 
can maybe go a little bit darker with our lantern here because that's going to show even more light. Uh, let's see. That bot's a brush liquor. Oh, that should be uh, that we need a, I don't know, some kind of a thing that pops up for that. Like a skull and crossbones that says brush liquor on it. Okay, I think we've got, well, we got some decent darks spread out here. Let's see what we can do for Mr. Skull here. I might need some more of my sepia liner back out here. And why is there a skull sitting there? I don't know. I just, uh, I looked at some of their, some of their other figures or whatever. They seem to have skulls in them. So whatever. I, again, I can't. I don't know anything about the campaign or anything like that. I can all I can do is just paint this and we're doing it in black and white. Uh, cadmium eater. Oh, beef in the hole wants to be famous. Is that what that's oh beef oh yeah. Buy follows and be famous. Uh it's uh, these were three D printed, so I, again, I I never got a chance to ask the person who printed these for me. Where's that bag? So yeah, it was. Uh, There's a few different designs. And they were just uh, printed out on his on his Mars. Now, if we do some kind of glow in there, we'll bring out the fluorescent paints too, which should be fun. All right, so let's see what the difference is now. Let's bring out some color here because we went film noir for a while and looks a little bit different with the color in there, I think. Oh, we got Nerd House Minis. How is that? How are you doing? No, thanks for the info. Thanks, and yes, I just, again... I'm always the kind of the last to know about these things. And so many different names to me they just kind of sound the same. I think the more I I've been basically stuck with the Wapelius name for 20 years of miniature painting because well that was that was where the first was a cool mini or not, and eBay and stuff, and we just basically had to keep the name anyway. And I'm just glad we kept that because there's 14 different names based on the brush this, the brush that, the real brush guy, the brush this, the brush that, and I can't keep any of them straight. So I'm pretty glad that we just kept things simple and it's just as close to my name as possible instead of some clever thing. And then be even cleverer and get yourself another name on another platform. So it's like, well, this is my name on Facebook. This is my name on Instagram. This is my name on over here. And it's just, okay, I have no idea who you are on this platform until you actually tell me. Oh, thanks, Nerd House. I appreciate you hanging out with us here. Now this what is this the bubble gum pink or something like that? Yeah, bubble gum pink mixed with a little bit of our clear magenta. Again, folks, these are all just a whole bunch of colors that I've almost never used before. I know I've never used this one before, and it was just a, one of those Reprocon specials or something like that. I've got some. Oh, actually, check this out here. So I've got this. And I got some of the some of the only then there's also uh, this one right here. And I think she'll be oh yeah, she'll be going on like this base right here, I do believe, with a nice little lantern there. So that should be fun. I think that we'll do that one 
probably in oils or something like that. Well, of course, naturally, we'll do that in oils. Let's play with a little bit of this drying retarder stuff again. Okay, this is that uh, bubblegum pink, clear magenta again. We'll maybe throw some designs on here too of some kind. So we won't get too crazy with just your regular old shading. I think we'll throw some some floral patterns on here maybe. Because, you know, you need those. Yeah, I think I see a little bit of a line here. I do have to say that, that stuff like this does more and more. I know there's there's hassles involved with 3D printing, but the more I mess around with resin stuff, all I keep thinking is, this could have been printed. It could have all been one piece instead of a thousand pieces with mold lines everywhere. And I'm still, well, at least with the 3D resin, yes, it can be brittle. Although I'm pretty sure that eventually they'll start coming out with 3D printing resin that's not as brittle as it is now. Hey, Calervo, how are you doing? Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's get a little bit more of our... We can still go lighter than this, too. This is not as light as we can go. That bubblegum pink is maybe a two and a half on our little value scale type thing. So we can go lighter. Yes. Now, of course, that'll take away some of the intensity of it as soon as we start to make that lighter. I also wanted to see, I've been using the clear paints and the, was it, the contrast paints for for so long here, doing that sort of semi-translucent thing. It's been a while since I've used any other Reaper paints, and I don't, it's been so long, I don't remember just how translucent or not the rest of their paints are. So, it's another reason why we're trying to find out what's going on with these. Here, let's move these guys back out of the way here. They don't need to be in the way. Uh, Calirvo, I, I wish I could paint everything in oils. It is so much more relaxing. Painting in acrylics, it just always feels like a crazy race to nowhere. And with the oils, it's just so much more chill. And I can get so much more done, like this unit of horses right here. I can tell you right now, there is absolutely no way, if these were done in acrylic... I'd still be painting these if I was working in acrylics. Working in oils, they're all done. Now let's get a little bit lighter here. Oh, do I... Mm. No, I won't throw the bubblegum pink in there because then it'll just start looking like bubblegum pink. Let's see if there's a little difference here. Uh, doing lots of prints. Uh... Nerdhouse, do you have a go-to brand for paints? There is no go-to brand or anything like that. Basically, if you just said, okay, you can have like 10 colors of paint, and this is acrylics, this is acrylics, it would be something like that. And we'll just uh, grab some of our liner paints here. So uh, basically this, everything else could just be ch chucked in the garbage. Oh, thank you very much, Inganes. I appreciate that. So your, your clear paints, and there's just a few of them, and then your your liner paints. Everything else that don't need it, just irrelevant. It's just too much. And you know, give it clear orange, clear yellow, just the usual clears. Uh, 
let's see. Do do do. Okay, I'll just let uh, let you guys have the printing conversation. I wish I could join you in that printing conversation, but we got to do this kind of stuff. If you're saying, okay, you only get one type of paint, well, it would be oil paints because again, faster. I would always choose the oils because, well, that was my favorite medium when I was doing 2D art as well. Now, I, I loved watercolors, but watercolors aren't really going to work terribly well on miniatures. So, oils it is as far as favorites go. Yeah, let's get a little bit of this maybe in our shadows here. Uh, let's see, numbskull, do do do. So at Calero, it's you don't always get the choice. Like these, they have to be dry and ready for pictures, like pretty much instantaneously here. Also, I try to for not everybody is going to be using oils. Also, people have been asking about this kind of stuff, so I'm just I literally threw this out on the palette just because people are asking questions about that. Get questions or, or miniatures of or paint that I've never used or maybe used once. I'm mean, like this. This was just a Reprocon special that I've never opened before. And people, they ask about paint colors. So if I don't ever try any different paint colors, I'll never really be able to tell people anything about those. Now, I think that might be about as light as I want to get here, too. If I'm going to be doing some object source lighting on, on this... Can't go too light. Here, let's take some of this away. I'm going to get a little bit more. That's that, that hottest pink. It's really not super pink at all. I mean, not that that's bad. doesn't matter to me. That is... <laughs> I guess that's the other reason why I love my oil paints. Because raw umber is raw umber is raw umber. As is sienna. As is ochre. As is indigo. There's no screwing around with stupid names. I really hate the stupid names. It just confuses the heck out of everybody. Makes it harder for people to try and, I guess, match stuff or whatever. Alright, that is almost dry enough. I should paint my prints in oils. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, I think we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll let that those guys chat amongst themselves. However, we are going to throw a little bit of our fluorescent orange out here on the palette. It's going to go somewhere. It's going to go here. I will also get a little bit of my clear yellow out here. here let's get a bit more of this. Now... Speaking of fluorescent, that's, oh, that's right, gotta mention that. So the latest YouTube video, which was a Twitch session, where are you at, mister? So this was the first time we used the fluorescent oil, uh, fluorescent oils for object source lighting, and this is on the YouTube channel right now. Where, oh, here we go, and this was the latest video. I just posted this video a few hours ago. I switched over the Sisters of Battle to oils as well. And yes, that was all freehand. All this stuff was done in one sitting, all with oils. It's it's just a few, literally a few hours old. What do we got here? Uh, there was a question. Someone asked, oh, what's your opinion? Is it easier to learn oil painting or acrylics from mini painting? It will depend on your experience. As someone who painted, I started painting in oils when I was 11. So I painted with oils before I ever painted with acrylics. So obviously, for me, oil's going to be easier. Uh, let's see. Things popping around here. Oh, thanks, Felonius. Thank you. And, uh... Oh, thanks, Numbskull. I just, well... You know me, I have the unhealthy obsession with object source lighting there. But, uh, Felonius, yeah, I, I was, uh, 
I was really glad to actually make that shift with the sisters there because there was so many requests for non-metallic in oils, but also the object source lighting in oils. And I thought, well, here you get better. What better thing on the on the flamey sisters to have object source lighting and do it with the oils? So we we'll just now we're going to start to establish our little bit of a glow here I think and I'm just gonna fill in all this we'll go back over that with some darker stuff but for now just gonna let the those areas be filled in oh geez there's another one over here holy smokes and then this should make an interesting little difference between all that hot pink and hotter orange So let's do some of that. And we're going to actually just take some of our magenta here with the fluorescent orange. And let's start to spread around some of this glow here onto the base. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun, John. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow. Let me make sure that we've got a uh, the best, le le or the best. I'm just going to kind of count that backwards three as an E and f always feel free to say, no, no, it, it's pronounced this way. I don't mind. It doesn't bother me. Uh, yeah, this is going to be fun here. Yeah, I'm glad. Uh, I'm assuming that's some form of bamboo right there. So Now this part will certainly need some orange here and the nice thing is that the now this is where the oils are also handy how many times did we talk about it on the horses where you can essentially do blind blending where well, you basically just start chucking the brush in here and you just move it around and you know that the paint is blending because well it's wet that's what wet paint does but with the acrylics you can't do that you actually physically have to go in there and do the blending yourself oils and this is a this is why I like taking the cranacrino magenta that's about the equivalent to the clear magenta and the reaper range I do think oh, let's see nearly 3 a.m. now so nerd house going to head off to sleep now no problem nerd house and this will this will certainly be a, a YouTube video little tutorial there uh, to me it's kind of I think it's helpful for folks so thanks again for stopping by catch you on the next one now the thing on that I'm doing on Friday that is not a stream for me that's being done I think it's gonna be some kind of zoom meeting uh, I know that that Lynn put the link in the last twitch session in the chat that we were doing I'd have to go and dig that out somehow but it, it's part of the virtual Gen Con. Part of that virtual Gen... Oh, I can actually turn up my brightness a little bit now. There we go. Now the Sisters of Battle, there's going to be, I want to say, probably six regular sisters of different types. There's a, a one or two seraphim. There is also, I think, at least two Sister Repentia in the mix. And due to the kindness of a very dear friend, the Indomitus box is here. So we're going to be assembling a bunch of that, but so is the Lumineth. So is the Lumineth box. And we can uh, do a little preview of what some of the basing is going to look like, at least on the Lumineth. Uh -huh. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun, Thank you so much for the follow, Kribnak. Uh, and Gandalf welcomes you, too. Oh, look at this. An elven or speak, friend, and enter. I mean, sir, I'm not kidding. Right? That That's the whole speak, friend, and enter. Well, it's very pretty darn close to it anyways. So we are going to be, well, since the temperatures have actually declined, or 
gone under 90 degrees, I'm going to just try and roll out some of this, if I can, maybe tomorrow, and bake as many sheets of this as I can so that I can make some bases for the lumineth. We might even do, I don't know, I really would like to do some basing on a stream. I really have not done that very much. and I, I, mean, I love basing. I, I've done some painting of bases on a stream and some landscaping of bases on a stream. As we got Lady B in the house. Oh, we got Chrissy Chrissy Lids, how are you doing? Oh wait, 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 what are we doing here? What are we doing? How do we forget some of this stuff out here? Let's get some of this with some of our glow too. How far should this extend? I'll hit that other shoe. And I it can go like maybe we won't make this lamp as intense as what we normally do for some of our OSL. I'm even going to darken here. That's just some of the magenta. Some of that clear magenta. That way we can darken down a little bit what's going on inside that lantern. I did think it would be fun to just do some some kind of consistent theme between each of these to have some kind of glowing lamp. I thought that could be fun. Let's go a little bit smaller here. Uh, I love the other but It kind of, uh, it depends what you want. Now this one here, I'm going to spread it out a little bit less. Sometimes here, I let it spread out a little bit further. I mean, he is, it's a big pool of lava, so it. I think it's okay to let that spread out further. Now, let's look at, well, okay, there's another one again. He's, let's move you out of the way. You can see this was a little bit less, even though he's on the lava thing, but this was blocking enough of that light. It kind of depends where your light source is also hitting that. Uh, let's see. Just see what other folks are saying. Uh, oh, we've got, well, we can go back to... So this one has a natural kind of cutoff point because of... You got this right here with the the marble. Now here, it's sitting on top of that. So it's going to get much more of the figure. Here you can see it's just getting certain parts of it. And that's it. Oops, no, she goes down here. He goes over here. Now let's look at this one. So this one, we tried to get to a little bit of it on the tree. And you can see we've got it on the underside of the bird there. Uh, to me, sometimes I'll just exaggerate it a little bit, maybe more than it actually needs to be. Just, I don't know. To me, it's more fun to have the lighting on there. Most of the stuff we're painting is just so fantastical and pretend anyway. Realism sort of goes out the window anyway with miniatures. You try to get some things that the viewer can relate to, I would say. But beyond that, I, I think it really just sort of depends on what it is you you need for your... It's, it's your figure. It's your reality. Ooh, so, hey, that's a, that's like a book of Wapo phrase. I, I, it's your figure, your real. I got to remember that one somehow. I've got to remember that one. That has to be a book of Wapo phrase. And see, I was, I wasn't quite sure, but see, I, I see that now. I, I kind of like that difference. I'm liking the difference in that. Who would have thought that hot pink would look cool? in comparison to, oh, I don't know, you take some fluorescent paint, some fluorescent orange, and boom. We can make it even more crazy with a little fluorescent yellow, too. Why don't we? Oh, no problem, Inganes. I That's why I try to keep as many of the figures around as possible. Let's see if I've got any more. Do I have any more of the... Well, okay, here's a different color. So this one has more of a, a purple 
tone to it and you can see yeah it's it's all kind of directed inward and then it just kind of ends there's a little bit of it up here that one's a much more muted faded that, that's what I was kind of hoping for with that one so the optic source thing can obviously it can be any color doesn't matter It'd certainly be any color you want now it is interesting what's happening here with the uh, with the the dress here to me it it makes her i don't know look a little bit i don't want to say less anime but a little less like she's walking out of a grammar school of some kind or a private school just i don't know it makes it look a little bit uh, has a little more depth to it i think uh, a couple of depends as well with ambient light where your mini is supposed to be is oh, and we have Maricella how are you doing now I don't know if I've got easily available here uh-huh oh okay this is this is like uh aha haha so I'm going to do this. And we can, so here, this is kind of giving you a little bit of a hint at where that light should hit. Let's see what happens if we, is this one, oh, okay. That one shows a little bit better. So here you can see, kind of gives you a hint at what, like here it's not going to necessarily hit there because you got that top in the way. But you can see where it's going to obviously hit all along in here. And these are just cheap little flashlights here. I, it's like five bucks for a, a hundred of them or something. They are definitely cheap. Oh, thanks, Marichella. This is really different for me. I... I don't know if I've ever actually painted anything anime style at all. In 20 years of painting miniatures, that that's another thing too. I, I try to paint as many different things as I can, and boy, you can't get really much different than the horses. Or, well, what were we just painting less than a week ago? We were painting this. A wee bit of a difference. To me, the the painting the different stuff, I, it, it's good for you because it. It forces you to come up with new solutions. So that's your fluorescent yellow. See how that's starting to even the lamp itself. There's a glow within the lamp instead of just the entire lamp glowing to the same degree. So I, we're having some fun here. At least I am. I know I'm having some fun with this. Boy, there's another piece of bamboo right here. I'm hoping that I can just get some lighter colors onto that. And you see here, now it starts to be more just a, an orange. Or even that, that mix with some of our magenta there. Let's smooth that out a little bit. I'm thinking she's going to be also casting a shadow too. Let's get some reflected light back there and some there. And then we could take some of, let's get our orange back out here. Just a smidge, just a smidge. Mix it with that dead Briar Rose or something like that. So now we've got ourselves a nice bit of orange brown here. Uh, I think, uh, let's see. Oh, Jackson, how you doing? How you doing, Jackson? Well, I'm glad that is useful, LaBest. And Filoni says, I received my first oil paints today. I have blocked out the entire weekend for painting. Well, just be sure to, uh, what's the usual that this cut yourself some slack too let, let yourself have some space to play around with those oils and see what they can do hack sometimes it's fun actually to just take a 
a, a flat piece of plastic or something like that and just do some blends on there and just mess around with that and try that out. I look at this so this is this is kind of fun here. Now we can see the actual texture of the lamp. I, I have to wait down here though because that that paint's still dry in there. But the lamp, the base, all that stuff looking pretty different. So we're going this is actually some of that same briar rose that we used in the initial kind of glazing phase of this and now it's we're using that to shade a little bit of our object source lighting here yeah I just I'm kinda I keep forgetting to even grab any of that drying retarder it's just it's so not part of what I really think about or do completely even forgetting it's out there Oh, Jackson is preparing for a holiday. Uh, thinking about messing. Yeah, that that is not a bad plan. I I do recommend that. Just uh, sometimes, like the vehicle weathering guys, they'll just take a like a plastic sheet of something, like a piece of plastic card or whatever, and just do some practice weathering on that. So, uh, Jackson, what uh, what holiday do you have coming up? I'm trying to think. I know that uh, Kathy was uh, Snowyak. He's like, yeah, I was uh, doing my holiday thing. And she's, what holiday? And I think it was, might have been a the feast of the Assumption or something like that. Which I mean, obviously, there, we are familiar with that here, but that's really not a national holiday sort of thing. So that was kind of interesting. Oh, I will, I think, extend this a bit further. Yeah. Why not? Now that we've got this in this state, let's do a oh visiting on the island of Sardinia. Wow, that is uh, yeah, talk about going somewhere to do some oil painting. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be very fun doing something like that. <laughs> no, that's because you paint so fast. Hey, we got Dungeon Master Painter. How are you doing? Sun Mediterranean Sea, good food, and so what the who there's uh and sailing. Hopefully sailing is part of that, because that is an activity. Wow. I couldn't tell you the last time I got to sail. But wind and sail, that is the proper way to move a ship. That that is some that's one of those simple pleasures in life that I hope to do at some point before the expiration date arrives. So we're just going to do a little bit of our film noir now that we've got we've got our light going here. So maybe I will darken that down just a pinch in a few places here. Just a little bit. It's going to give us even more of our contrast, I think. I do believe that works. Now, I'm going to go back to some of my orange. I will take a little bit of the, the yellow in there as well. And we'll have that maybe spill out over the side. we got to get some lighter stuff going here too, I see. We've got yellow there, not much in the way of orange. I prefer that that was orange. My glow. Not that you can see it. That's the fun thing about film noir. That's the fun thing. Okay, let's bring this back. Uh, let's see. I have a meeting at 2.30 and, and, and a.m. and suddenly I'm very tired. Well, it's 3.08 a.m. here. So you're late. You're you're a half hour. Yeah, you're gonna be late. <laughs> All right, let's bring back some of our color now. You can see what's going on. There we are. So let's 
Let's leave that now. Let's advance on to another area here. Let's do maybe some skin tones. Why don't we? Actually, I'm going to give this thing a spritz here because the fans are just doing their thing. Doing all the drying of stuff. You know what? This is a... I kind of made a Terra Rosa right there. That is very much like a... That's very much like my Terra Rosa. So we're just going to create some kind of a skin tone here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my magenta in here. And let's start doing some skin. Face is awful tiny. May not be able to do that on the stream here. At least not without my, my secondary, well, my main light turned on. Technically, this is my secondary light that I'm using. And what is this? Yeah, I think that's that's supposed to be skin there. I'm just guessing. Up oh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Oh my god. Let's see. A dungeon master's going to lurk. Has a lot to do prepping. Oh, look at a Drax. We have Drax in the house. How are you doing? So Drax, the the Indomitus box is here. So hopefully, I don't know if I'll be able to get anything assembled for a Saturday extravaganza. It, I might just have to do that next week. Because tomorrow is all going to be about that Aces of Painting thing. So, not that that's terribly long, but... So how are you doing? Hopefully everything is okay there. Everything's relatively calm, and you're able to just kind of... Oh, did you get your extra... No, you wanted more than 20. You wanted 40 more Necrons, right? Or was it just 20? Because you're, you're, you want 80 altogether, right? Just the regular, the regular sloggers. At least I seem to remember that you wanted 80 of those. Oh, you got to deal with for more warriors. Well, that's good. I mean, obviously, people can do the trading thing. Now, I have both, obviously, the the Marines and the and the Krons. Because well, I haven't really had a chance to actually paint any space marine. I haven't painted any space marines in oils. So aside from just the Rubik Marines that I wanted to do in oils, I thought, well, if we're doing the Necrons in oils... Oh, uh, something did new did arrive from Green Stuff World today. And of course I left it in the other room, but it's fluorescent powdered pigments. So I... I, I don't know if I can do something with those in the Necrons... Maybe <laughs> that could be kind of hilarious if we did. All right, what are we gonna do with our with this here? We're taking some of that. That's the the hottest pink. I think we'll just take some of our. Again, we'll just go with white there. Is this is this a Drew that's entering my domain here? Is this Drew? No, it's Berserker Works. Oh, hello, Berserker Works. Ah, so steal it. Well, we're gonna we're gonna have to find some kind of fun thing for those. But let's welcome in our raiders, folks. So welcome, raiders. We are working. We're actually back to acrylics again, which is unusual for. Hey, we got Memnor. How are you doing? Ah, that should be there Monday. Okay, oh, and you got the Marion Street oils. Well. Now, did you just stick with the orange, or did you get a few other types? Hopefully, you're able to get just a couple to play with. Ah, you, I bring Drew's Raider. Okay, awesome. He stopped already. Okay. 
But thank you so much, Berserker Works. It's appreciated. So, folks, if you're not already following Berserker Works, but I'm pretty sure you are. You're probably already following Drax. Heck, you're probably already following Drew as well. Now, were you able to get some fun stuff done on your stream? Because uh, not every stream yields lots of painting. Oh, thanks. That was the, uh, yeah, that's the guy that's up on up on YouTube now. That was a session probably from maybe about 11 days ago. Maybe, maybe two weeks ago. So that was this guy here. And this was the first use of the fluorescent oil paints and well and OSL in oils. And he was kind of a test. He was a little bit of a test. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun oh, Thank you so much for the follow, zombie leftovers. So then we switch we're doing our Sisters of Battle Army painting series and we actually went with some object source lighting in oils with this. Oh thanks, Memnor. Oh, let's see, you had, a, had the crazy idea to mix them with printing resin. Oh, uh, you'll have to let me know how that experiment goes. Uh, I I don't know enough about printing to... It's going to be a long time, I think, before I can try that. I, I think it's going to be a while before I can try crazy, wild, fun stuff like that. Oh, let's see, I finally got the bit I was waiting for on Gosgool. Place that and some other bits tonight. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you were you were working on him. And now we actually have one of those here now too. And I, I'll definitely do some oil things on him because why not? I also have to get my my def copters out. Those stupid old def copters. They're sitting around somewhere. I don't know where I've got them, but they're around. I don't know where they are, but we'll try and find those. Now, one of the things we've been doing here is a little bit of, we call it film noir, and I'll show you in just a second. So we got some fairly bright colors going on here, right? We got our object source lane. That is your fluorescent yellow paint. But you know what we like to do here. We like to go film noir, zoom. We take away the color. Now you're just left with the shading. And you can see we got that under lighting right here. You can see there's lighting on the leg, but now you don't see the difference in the cooler magenta and the flamey, fiery orange. You do see the lights and the darks. Now, for the new folks, you haven't actually seen this miniature yet. This is another one of my recent tutorials here. So I painted almost the entire figure with the camera like this. You could see the palette, so I'll get the palette over here. See, that's in color. Watch what happens when we bring our color back. He looks a little different. And when I pulled up the color, even for me, I was shocked. And I could see the color in person, but then when I pulled up the color on the screen, this is what I wanted him to see. So if we got, it's not just gray over here. There's some greens. That's almost purple. That kind of almost looks like a tan color there. You can really see some purple over here. And then you get into all of your, your blues over here. But when that was done in black and white, you did not see any of that. All you just saw was the value. That's it. Uh, let's see. Green and yellow as well. Oh, wow. That's, uh... Oh, yeah. You know what? That's actually... That was one of the other ones that I thought I should probably still try to get, is the yellow one. Because the, the green one... Yeah, it, it's it's intense, but boy, it seemed like the cadmium green could be darn near as intense as that. Well, especially, well, and you don't need me to tell you what actual cadmium paints do as far as their intensity. You know just as well as I do. I, have, I was enjoying the cadmium orange on the... We used a little bit of that on one of the horses. I think you saw. I think you got a chance to see that. I think we're all caught up on chat. Now, we also wanted to try and do some, I think, some free handy things on our on our dresser. Now, I am seeing that the drying retarder, well, it keeps it okay on the palette, but on the miniature, ah, eh, whatever. 
It's almost just acting more like a little bit of a flow improver at this point. Again, it's not something that I'm ever really going to use very much. It's not my deal. Take some of that bubblegum pink and let's really jump this up here, I think. In a couple of places. And then we'll think about some kind of a pattern to throw on here, maybe. So again, that's that, that hottest pink color. Let's throw a little bit of our, again, that's just drying retarder, something I almost never use, but, well, actually, almost all of these colors are colors that I just never use. I didn't even know I had them. I just happened to, they literally fell out of a container as I was looking for something else. They quite literally just fell out of a container, and they're just, I mean, this one is, it was all Reapercon stuff. So, yeah, handwritten label there. I think we've got a couple other ones with handwritten labels and stuff like this that I just have not ever tried. This one kind of reminds me of the old Violet Liner, and that was, oh, I loved, I loved that one. Well, I love all the liner paints. But that one especially. Here, we're going to take some of this clear magenta and we'll hit these beads here. Let's take this that purple here. What is that again? The carnival purple. Do this and then let's see what happens when it is cut with some white. And I think it's going to, yeah, that's about the color I was hoping for. Let's see if we can't get some lighter tones here in this purple. The hair has a touch of bluishness to it, and that is the, that's the indigo, rich indigo. Let's mix that with a little bit of our, again, our white over here. We'll take some of the, for the heck of it, we'll take some drying retarder to that. It's definitely the most muted of our colors out here, I would say. This is such a insanely different palette from what I've been doing recently, even from the Sister of Battle. Even though she had the flamey thing in gold armor, it was still colors compared to this very different, very different. Yeah, let's get the more on her hair back here too. I'm just I'm guessing those are feathers in her hair. I could be wrong. Uh, Steeler, I haven't had much luck with the retarder so far. Glaze medium, yeah, and that's what I used to use all the time. And then I just sort of got away from it. Again, as a person who did watercolors for the longest time, we didn't have those kind of things. We just, we literally just had water. And that's what we used. And water was just fine. And I can still go lighter with this too. But I don't want to go too far just yet. I just think of the all of the vehicle stuff that we did last weekend and the weathering powders. And now what arrives is those fluorescent weathering, well, fluorescent powdered pigments. That is going to be just, that's going to be an interesting little experiment for sure. Now, so yeah, that's a, a little bit different from, oh, doing this to our horses and oils like this. And that was uh, Monday and then into Wednesday. We were working on these guys and I guess that was still kind of earth tones and, and now we're into our magentas and very flowery colors. Very flowery colors. I'm 
I'm going to see if I can't go even lighter here. Some of this hair color, maybe. I think I'm going to get that jar of paint out of the way here. Usually you don't have that kind of stuff sitting on camera. I don't remember the name of this character at all. These are from, was it Succubus Publishing? That's that's who. Is it. And it is, uh, I believe the Kickstarter campaign is still going. You would just have to kind of do a little Succubus Publishing search on your own there and see what the heck comes up. I have found their website that doesn't really talk too much about a Kickstarter campaign. I'm just going to throw this right here on the ponytail. We'll do more with that later on, but I think we're going to maybe change the, the color on that a little bit. Here, let's get the, it's more of a tan kind of a look to that. Toning it down. There we go. Let's see what we can do here to bring out some lighter tones on that face if we can. Need to get some magentas in there as well. We'll do that. I mean, we got magenta sitting right over here. There and yeah, we needed some of that. Not sure what, how light or dark I'd actually want those lips to be. We've got mostly hair over here, so can't do much with skin tone over there. I might actually maybe darken this down. We've, we've been lightening, lightening the hair. Let's maybe let's darken some of it down. Sometimes when you're going lighter and lighter and lighter, you need to actually go in the opposite direction and make something darker. And it's it, it doesn't have to be... I, I know I like to do a lot of the, the, like the clear, the Reaper clears and such, and do glazing and stuff with that, but it doesn't have to be those. You can glaze with basically... Just like any brush is a blending brush, pretty much any paint can be a glazing paint. Yeah, I like that being darker. Let's see if we can't have a little lighter skin color here. Again, just taking some of that drying retarder. We'll see what that, that really does make a difference or not. I'm not expecting to do any wet blending here because, well, it's not oils. It would sure be fun if it was. Get some lighter tones there. Then we have to figure out, okay, if we're going to do freehand designs, how do we make those not overpower just the, the overall lines of the figure? Because a freehand can get to be too much in quite a hurry. Maybe it will just be some darker magenta flowers in some cases. Maybe it'll be some kind of filigree design. Yet to be determined. So I'm just taking some of the magenta, mixing it with that interesting darker purple. It's another way, again, of making the skin tone just look lighter by virtue of having something darker next to it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I don't... Yeah, we're not going to do any kind of outlining here. Okay, let me get a drink real quick. Mm. 
we need to get a little bit of shading in here. Again, it is sort of a glaze, a very gentle glaze at that. Perhaps a little bit more over here. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. Thank you so much for the follow. Is that ultra? Uh, well, it could be ultra, but I just see ultra six seven. And as always, folks, you can feel free to say no, no. This is how you say my screen name. That's all good. I've been saving some of the blue here, potentially for some flowers, filigree, whatever. I'm going to throw a little bit of this into the hair. That, that's the one little extra kick that I've been waiting to throw in here. And I think it's the, I think it's time now to throw that extra little kick in there. Maybe even here too, because we got plenty of magentas and pinks. Maybe we need something more. Maybe we even get a little bit of that blue into here too. A little touch of extra separation. Looking at those beads, uh, I think I'm going to see just how light that I can make that clear magenta be. And find some lights on those those little beads here. It's going to be hard for you to see, possibly. But they're sitting right over here. Ah, and there's uh, another little chain of them over here. I thought about maybe doing those with some of the, the lighter purple. I'm going to go some more with this blue here again. I think that is true. It's true blue. We used to... Oh, what do we call this? Like non-repo blue is what we called this. Because what we would do in the, well, and back in the printing industry, well, and even in art too, and, and some people still will do this, but you would do your, your drawing in a blue pencil about this color. And the idea is that when it was copied, it did none of the blue showed up so you'd have these things that look like a whole mess of blue it was just blue lines all over the place and when it was printed all you would see if it was in red or in black that would print but if it was if it was that light blue color the camera just completely ignored it which now that's going to be here let's do something here let's do our little film noir action Uh, if you can't make it brighter, you can make everything else darker. That's for sure. Yep, non-photographic blue. So, yeah, see how that hair just kind of disappears? Even though it's not that bright. It is not that light, but it looks almost as bright as our fluorescent yellow and such. Interesting. Very interesting. Now it's maybe time for some darks here. We've been doing a lot of lights, some mid-tones. Let's see what happens with a few darks here now. Uh, the, the string, I'm still not quite sure. Do I make that string darker, lighter? Uh, that I don't know yet. Doesn't have to be determined right now anyways. Let's see what we can do here to get a little bit of separation on our base. We need a shadow here. I mean, it is... It's being lit from the other side, so this should be a, maybe a touch darker. I'm so used to using brown liner for that. But I just... I didn't... All the, the only liner paint I've got is my sepia liner. 
There are no other liner paints out there. The only clears I think I've used so far are the clear yellow and clear orange. No, clear yellow and clear magenta. What is my domain? Do we have ourselves a Steiner in the house? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, folks, be sure to give Steiner miniatures a follow. Thank you so much, Steiner. So how did your stream go? I hope you were able to make some progress. Uh, actually, speaking of, uh, that was was that your orc bike that you were doing, that big, or it was like an orc buggy, wasn't it? And you were doing some chipping medium and that sort of stuff. Were you still uh, working on that tonight? So hopefully you got some, some stuff done on that. I know there was also, uh, what was the other, you were doing a, it was a Space Marine 2. No, it was a bust. That's what it was, a bust. So hopefully that, both of those things are going well. Because I think you had just started, and you were looking forward to doing all the, the rust and everything. Like, ah, the orc trike, that's it. All right. Sometimes I just think I'm losing my mind. But that had a lot of nifty shades of blue on it and such, and... That was the was the chipping medium of the variety where you airbrush it on and you kind of wait a certain amount of time and then you take your, your water and stuff and you remove it or was it a, a more of a brush-on chipping application there? Uh, the brush-on chipping fluid, which I guess you can, you can brush on any chipping fluid, I suppose. You don't necessarily have to do it with an airbrush. I'm also trying not to snap this thing off the base because these are very dainty, very freaking dainty figures. Oh my goodness. That's what I need. I need something nice and fiery but yet still on the mid-tone side of things. And I'm going to get myself just a couple of, I don't want to say darker glazes, but since the fluorescent stuff is relatively, well, not relative, it's super transparent anyway. Where'd you go? Where's, there it is. This is pretty darn fluorescent, or pretty darn transparent anyway. We don't need to necessarily use a lot of water to enhance that. Now this, we got, that's kind of flat there. We need to make a decision color-wise, and we are going to, I think, do something like this. That might be enough. Might have to go a little lighter. But these are pretty much separate panels. Let's see if we can't separate those a little more. Of course, I've gotten so freaking used to using the oils, and I'm trying to kind of take a different approach when that's not quite the approach that I can take with these. Man, have I gotten used to the oils. So where where's that big old thing? Where did he go? It's around here somewhere. But that, what's it called? It's, uh, oh, here it is, Thanos. That's it. So this is the thing. Yes, all of this, including him, uh, tomorrow night, I think at something like around 7 p.m. Central, we, we start, we, we, I think we have an hour and 15 minutes to paint this here. So that should be interesting. We'll be doing it with oils. What is that? Marvel Crisis Protocol. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be painting that. Like I said, should be interesting. Have no idea what's going to happen. Not quite even sure how that works or how they're going to make it work. This is that bubblegum pink, I believe. Yeah, bubblegum pink. I'm going to go back in with some lights now. Just because I can. Now, oh, let's see. St oh, Steep Tea. Holy smokes. Steep Tea. I'm sorry that I missed your stream tonight, folks. You, got, you, you must follow Steep Tea. If you want some some good vibes and some well and some good tea, you'll get some good tea well steeped if you follow steep tea. 
So how did your stream go earlier tonight? I'm sorry that I missed it. I was that big giant hunk of plastic that you just saw me f chucked into the floor. That I was busy doing that and, and a bunch of these. Which actually reminds me, uh, Steve, of, of you and all of your uh, Kingdom Death stuff that, that you've been doing. That That's what this stuff kind of reminds me of. It's like uh, channeling my inner tea. Oh, thanks, Steiner. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, see? Steiner knows. I uh, did a bunch of sculpting and had some fun. Now, did you finish the one thing that I saw you sculpting? Uh, was that the tree that you were sculpting there? Because that, that was a rather monstrous uh, thing that you were sculpting. That seemed quite large. Now we're going to get, that's that, uh, again, the bubblegum pink. We are mixing in a bit of our, a little bit of white with that. Trying to find ourselves some lights here. Oh, thanks, Deep T. Oh, the Will of the Wisp and the tree are still in progress. Okay, all right. Yeah, I felt really bet the last couple of days I, I've I've kind of what has it been in withdrawal just a bit because I haven't gotten the the usual late night dose of uh, my late night people, and you kind of get used to that input. I mean, I'm used to getting some some of the the late night tea and and all the other late night crew. I I don't know if I'll be able to. Hopefully I'll be able to catch Jinxed tomorrow if she does her stream late at night on Friday. I want to get a little bit of my, yeah, brighter there, maybe even here. And then I've got to start to think, what if we want to do some freehand on here, just exactly what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We got to keep it relatively sane. Can't go too crazy with it. Boy, those fingers are tiny. Uh, let's see. Starting up my first Patreon lewd miniature. Uh, some special modifications to a certain miniature. Well, I suppose Kingdom Death also provides good opportunity for that sort of a thing. I mean, that's that's kind of a Kingdom Death sort of a thing. They have spicy miniatures. <laughs> Very spicy. Now, I've got to figure out what these uh, feathers... Oh, I know what we haven't messed around with. We have not messed around with our fluorescent pink in quite a while. Uh, let's see, what brush are you using? It's super tiny, but I see a ton of pool at the ferrule. It is, I will show in one second if I can get that. This to be just out on the palette there. There we go. There we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's intense. Mm-hmm, that's, that's the hottest pink right there. So a while ago, and I mean by a while ago, probably... 15-ish years ago, Kathy and I, we found the Windsor Newton Cotman's, and this is the triple zero, yeah, so there's double zeros, triple zeros, we're also, now, the nice thing is, too, is you've got the, okay, that's a zero, but it's also, look at this second number over here, so, so you got the one, 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 but you also have some two, two, twos, and where the heck is, uh, Somewhere I've got another 222. Yeah, is this is a triple. Yeah, there's another triple zero right there. So that's a, a quadruple zero. The nice thing is that it's a synthetic brush, which actually makes it very nice. Okay, let's just. Uh, oh, what the heck? Here, let's play here. Let's let's play. Let's just do a quickie little something or other here.
but you can see it doesn't really deform at all whereas a uh, your typical sable brush is going to deform a bit it makes it really actually handy for freehand designs so let's do i think it's going to have to be five right so one two three four five So we'll just get these, make our little pie slices here, kind of a little chrysanthemum thing going on, like so, and then we could, wow, that, oh boy, that, that's intense magenta right there. It puts all these other ones to shame. So boom, there you go. And I'm going to use that. Wow. Okay. I forgot to just break out some of the fluorescent magenta to get some nice bright areas on here. Actually, wait a second. No, that, that's, that's deny some of the... Oh, let's see. I'm super impressed with the shape. Going to need to get those. Well, that's, that's the nice thing is that this... Well, here. I'll go this way. And then, where is my, here we go. So we got a tail of three brushes right here. A couple of triples here. And the quad zero. This is your Windsor Newton Series 7, so you know how much those cost. This one costs about, it's basically halfway between these two. I want to say this one's around six or seven. But it's also a sable, as you can see. But this one's a synthetic. This one's about three-ish dollars, something like that, especially on Dick Blick here. So that is another, another plus, another plus. And boy, I'm really enjoying my fluorescent pink now. Yeah, let's really pop this in here. We ain't kidding now. Yeah, that bubblegum pink pales in comparison. So. We're going to go film noir. So remember, we filmed an entire video like this just recently. Can you even see? You can't even see a difference. You can't even see a difference. It looks maybe a little lighter on screen. You, you won't believe how different it looks. Wow, this is such an intense color. And you can't, you can't see any of the impact of it here, which is hilarious. Well, eventually you will, because I, I promise I'll bring back the color. I promise I'll bring some of that back, and you'll get to see it. But for now, yeah, this is really intense. And this is, and it's basically kind of reduced a bit just by virtue of adding that, that white to it. And yes, we can use our finger to blend. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, so the most of the paints are just Reaper paints, although some of these are just ReaperCon paints. So Anne just kind of handed me this one. It just said the hottest pink. Uh, well, I, I don't get to use clear magenta as much because sometimes Kathy steals it, bubblegum pink. It was basically just a handful of colors and this rich indigo here. But the the fiery stuff, now that was done here with your fluorescent paints. So let's bring back our color now. Come on. There we go. So look at how intense that pink got. That's the that's that fluorescent paint that we just added. So yeah, the now for me typically what am I using? I'm typically using the Reaper Clear and Liner paints. That's what I use 99% of the time. But sometimes I don't, people, they want to see something other than just those colors, and when I'm not working with oils, so I like to kind of change things up. Now, speaking of the oils again, so there's your impact of fluorescent oils.
it kind of does the same thing. All of this done in oils. All wet into wet, of course. Let's do a couple of more of our little flowers here. Let's just do a few, maybe not a whole ton of these, but a few here and there. So again, we've got to spread out our five dots. At some point, I'll, I'll get the pictures of the Orc Blood Bowl team that was done as a samurai. And you can see the, <laughs> oh my goodness, the big sumo wrestling troll, complete with the hairdo. I noticed over the past years, well, that uh, I kind of uh, take the blame for that because I've been using oils for about the last four, well, almost four years. It's been three years and ten months since I started using oils. And I'll show you, we'll, we'll do a little trip back in time because I've got the pictures for it now. So see how this brush doesn't flex? So it makes it really nice and easy to be doing all these little flowers and such. Now let's get ourselves a couple little dots in here. Like so. Okay. We'll find ourselves a couple pictures. So this was the this was the very first time that I used oil paints. This was again about three years, ten months ago on that on the M18 there and on those winter americans and i thought okay i can maybe paint 40% of it with the oil paints let it dry finish off the detail stuff with acrylic but then i realized i could do some more and this is when i did my winter soviets all 72 of them and vehicles in oils and then we started to do some other things in oils now that was in oils. This was also in oils on the 4th of July. We've got our Ice Elemental also in oils. Oh, uh, Felonius was out for a couple of minutes. That was the Cotman brand. And we'll, you'll see him again. I'll show you those in, in a second here. Now, some of these Dark Sword here. Let's look through here. Now, let's see. The one on the right. Nope. Actually, none of these were oils. But each one of those represents actually a different tutorial. Each of these represents a different tutorial on the... Ah, here we go. So that figure on the far right-hand side, that was done in oils. And that's another recent tutorial in oils right there. And let us go to... We're almost there, folks. Boom. There we go. This is the one everybody loves. So this is half the size of a human head. This is from Blackheart Models. That is the Karakalila bust, and that was all done entirely in oils. That was about 11 and a half hours to paint that whole thing. Oh, no problem, Felonius. No problem. And let me see. But it's not just for painting large things. You can paint other stuff, too. Oh, like these guys. Those were done in oils. And now I've also done something very similar to these halberds and I've done these in oils. I did the mountains men with that same sort of sky earth non-metallic look there and then this was the original Dothraki unit we did those guys in oil too. Uh, so I will show you those in just a bit here. Let me uh, get back to my scene. There we go. So the brushes again it's, uh, it's Windsor Newton, but blue handle. It is a distinct blue handle, and Cotman is going to be your name right there. Now, Steep T, you, just, I, you can't beat the oils at all. Now, the oils that I typically use are Windsor Newton brand. This is another little thing. So one of these was painted in acrylics, and one was painted in oils. Both of these are on the YouTube channel. Which one is acrylics? Is it this? Is it is this the one in acrylics? Is it or is it this one? This one, that was done in acrylics, actually with fluorescent acrylic paints. This was done in regular oils right here. Now these two took about the same time to paint. However, painting ten of these 
I could probably get ten of these painted in the time it would take me to get three and a half, maybe, painted of these. Maybe only three of these. You can see the weathering looks the same. And this is no fluorescent green here either. This was just so much easier to paint. I mean, it, look at this felonius. It's so rich. And now this is the reason why I brought this up, because the oils that I used, here we go. So this is what I bought almost four years ago. So this is that set of 10, Windsor Newton, and this is kind of like the Cotman of oils right here. So see it says Winton. Now there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, this is about 28 bucks on Amazon. Oh yeah, well see, this now this is, well, yeah, we'll get into the fun stuff in just a second with the, the units of, of currency. Now let's look at, ah, uh, here we go. So see this, how it says cadmium red hue? That makes a difference because while this is sort of an intense red, there is no cadmium in here. Now this right here, this one tube of paint that weighs about 4,000 pounds, this one tube costs more than this entire paint set. Why? Because that's the real deal. That has cadmium in there. But remember, cadmium is a heavy metal. That's why this thing weighs a ton. The intensity of this color is beyond anything you're going to see here. But again, real cadmium, not real cadmium. So those, those are some of the factors that you have to just kind of work in for yourself. Now, you can see this is the regular Winsor Newton oils. Again, that's this one's maybe about seven, eight bucks. Do you have to buy those tubes right away? Not necessarily. Not necessarily, but again, it really does help getting all of these guys done. You can see, look at all the rich colors we've got. Look at the blues, some of the pinks. You can see some greens on this side. You can see that, that reddishness in the in the horse. Look at his tail has some green in it. That is the difference with the oils. Like I said, this took a fraction of the time to paint at what it would with acrylics. And, and again, oils are very friendly budget-wise because for the price of these five contrast paints, you could get that starter set, right? You could get all ten of these oils you could get your high quality thinner. You could get these right here because again, it's 12 brushes at 4.99, and you could even get the makeup sponges here that you need. So basically, everything that you need for oils for the price of five contrast paints. How does that sound? Uh, let me see. Steep teaser. One of my favorite facts is that mummy brown oil paint was originally made using real mummies. And the reason why mummies still exist, well, and people ate the others. Yes. I'll never forget when Kathy and I, we, we saw the, it was years ago. And you can still see some of like the old containers where it was like mummy dust and mummy whatever. Every, it was like a health thing, eating mummies. That was, uh, that had to be some fun. Well, I, I I hope you have some fun with it. I think you will because you know, you're using the, the Scale 75 tube paints. Now, this is the, the different thing, though. I will say this. Every oil paint color is very different in terms of one to the next. So some are really translucent. Some of them are very, trans, uh, very opaque. Some of them are very thick. And some of them are very thin. And pretty much the only way to really get a handle on them is to just use them. Just use them and kind of see what happens. And unlike acrylics where, yes, okay, maybe yellow doesn't cover as well as green or something like that, but they're pretty much the exact same consistency. Oils are totally different. They are a very different animal for sure. So that little bit of blue starts to bring that out. Speaking of some blue here, let's, 
I'm going to go back to maybe some of this lighter color in the hair now because we got our darks back in there. And the other thing too is with the oils, a, a nice starting miniature, actually something like this that has a lot of open surfaces, cloaks, that sort of thing. Those are actually pretty fun for starting out with with oils. Gives you the best chance to do some of that, that fun blending. Also with the oils you want to go minimal. Uh, let's see, uh, Steiner, have a, well, Steiner has a cheap set of oils now. Hopefully they're not too cheap because sometimes the super bargain basement oils they don't quite act the same. I just I've seen people like at Adepticon, uh, a couple of folks had like the five dollar set of oils and they were all excited and oh about three minutes in they kind of went, Oh and I said, Here, here, just use some of mine. So it it could have but 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 then you know, I mean I'm sure they were not they certainly weren't forty bucks a tube, so it's all good. Let's do just a few lights in here now. Because we've gotten some of the... We went back in, restored some of the darks. I'm going to get a little bit of this purple tone out here. Just, just for the heck of it, why not? I also have to start thinking about something on this lamp here besides just all the warm colors. So we're going to have to go in there and do some, do some other things. That's about right. Let's see if we can't make ourselves another little border along here, maybe. I'm almost thinking. Wait, wait one second here. Almost kind of like a little bit of a cloud, sort of a background here. Let's see if we can make that work and just sort of pile up some of these. Just down in the corners here maybe, and if I don't like it I can just wipe that away. Kind of let that fade in and out of there maybe. Now uh, let's see, what brushes are best for oils? There's no best brush. I use the exact same brushes that I use for my acrylics and I use them for oils. Uh, steep teat, no, the thinner is not going to hurt brushes or anything like that and remember the operative phrase is high quality thinner. This container here was about ten dollars. This is not the cheap dime store garbage because actually that would make my eyeballs melt. And so this, I, I can have this open right underneath my nose and nothing happens. Oh, we got a great ghost in the house. How are you doing? Uh, well, remember, oil paints have been around for quite a while. And synthetic brushes have been around quite recently. So think how many hundreds of years people were painting with natural hair brushes on oil paint. And now again, they're, they're, they were not using cheap dime store uh, thinner either. So just, yeah, I, I really try to tell people, no, it's not going to hurt your brushes. Actually, the worst thing for your brushes is this junk right here because that gets in the ferrule and stays there and never goes away. And you actually have to more harshly clean to get this junk out of your brush. Now let, let's look at the oils here. Here, let's... So look at what your operative thing is here. Safflower oil. That is way less nasty than the petroleum junk that goes in here. This stuff is elastic. This stuff is... this stuff can be broken down naturally. That's the difference. Uh, let's see. Now we're going. To, yeah, I like getting a little bit lighter stuff right here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And I'm now. Nah, I won't put anything lighter there. 
I'm like, yeah, I'll go with that little bit of the, the cloud effect here and let that, uh, Do I want to get some more lights in the hair? Oh, Kingfisher Games, how are you doing? Yep, I want to get a little bit lighter here on the end of the hair. I, do I want to get some more lights in the hair? I'll wait. I will wait on that. Do need to get some more shape in the hands. I've got a genuine vision in the house. Hey, Jan. How's it going? I assume you're getting ready. Well, I, well, you know what the first three letters in assume are, but I'm assuming that you're getting ready for a another early morning. Well, not early morning stream. Regular morning for you. Of course, usually when I am trying to somehow drag myself off to get some shut eye. Ah, even Fell is going to get to watch for 10 minutes before you go on your break. Yeah, we've been doing a little bit of film noir on this, especially because of all the, the very bright colors here. And it's really fun to see what this looks like, wham, with no color on it. You don't look at this. So the hair that you lose all of the purple look at how light that looks. And then you lose all of the kind of that fluorescent magenta that's going on in some parts of her, her dress and outfit there. It looks just like the skin tone. But when we bring back that color Oh, Steep T has to head off. Well, thanks for joining. It was really nice to actually have you in here because usually I'm the one typing at you. So this this was a real treat, and thank thanks for stopping in. Now, actually, oh, when's the when's your next stream gonna be? So let everybody know when that's going to be. We can't let you out of here before you do that. I really am liking the as much as the bubblegum pink was was cute and all that. I really do like the intensity of the of the actual fluorescent magenta here. So we'll just we'll keep going with that. Let's see the pinks on the. No, actually this is all acrylic paint here, Abenfell. So these are. There we go. So you got your golden fluorescent right here. So next stream, catching steep tea is Saturday 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, I did use, actually, just earlier, well, technically earlier today, now earlier yesterday, this was my one of my army painting series. I did use the fluorescent orange oil paint on this, and that was the Marion Street oils. Now, let's see. Kingfisher is working on a salamander's work, but in the town in this chat right now, I've got to ask. I've got to blend between intense green and intense lime for my shade. Well, that would have to be somebody, maybe a genuine, somebody that uses Vallejo paints or something like that could do an assist there. I have it. Geez, when's the last time I used Vallejo paints? It's been a long time. This is pretty much the last of the Vallejos that I use. Is there a metal medium? That is about the last of it. it it's mostly, it became an availability thing, was one of the primary reasons why Vallejo just kind of fell off to the side because well as everyone knows the best ability is availability and for us just because of certain things Vallejo stuff became a lot harder to get a hold of and Reaper stuff became very easy to get a hold of so the Reaper stuff took over Now, of course, if you're if you're based in Europe and stuff, the Vallejo is definitely well. It's going to be a lot easier for you to get that than it is Reaper stuff. Heck, Reaper paints might almost be impossible to get for some of you. Which, ironically enough, that's the whole reason. 
13 months ago I got some of these things because these became basically the substitute for the clear paints uh, and the liner paints too so the Leviathan blue became the substitute is this blue liner here yeah I don't even know if I can find the oh look at that so basically I tried to find the equivalent of this was this and that's why we've been using those oh let's see Stein oh uh, Steiner yeah we uh, there is definitely lots of fun stuff there um, and some things that aren't even really on there yet actually <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff yeah not even on there like uh, I don't even think, yeah, this didn't, this is not on there, I don't think, or maybe it is. Maybe I did just throw this on there, but not the winter Russians. As we get an Oliver Ghost in the house, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw a little bit of the magenta here, too. Why not? That's that bright fluorescent magenta. Let's do some of our flowery things on the other side of this. So we're going to do our clouds over here. That means flowers over here. We'll do our little five dots here, five slices of the pie. Let's have another one over here. Can you even see that? Well, it's kind of hidden by the cloak or that her sleeve. I guess, yeah, that's her sleeve. Okay, that one there. Now let's uh, thin this down and let's see if we can't do some clouds over here. That's the scale 75 now. Okay, that's, uh, thanks, Genuine Vision. At Reaper, it's weird. It can be a, it can be a tough find. Of course, we do ReaperCon every year, so that makes it a little bit easier. And obviously, if you're teaching classes there, they appreciate it when you use Reaper paints for obvious reasons. Okay, we can lighten this up now a little bit. Thin this down again. The the commons really do make it easy to be able to do some of this freehand in a hard to reach, especially the hard to reach areas. Uh, let me see. Twilight Walker says they buy Reaper from their site. They throw even throw in free minis once the purchase hits a certain amount. Oh, Maruticai. So. Actually, well, I, we can do a little trip back down memory lane. So, for many years, actually, I think it's going to be next year, I will have officially painted miniatures for as long as I did 2D art. But I used to, well, actually, I used to teach watercolors, pastels. Never got a chance to teach oil painting, actually. And that, I mean, actual 2D oil painting. But in just a minute here, we'll take it. This is a little look-see at what used to be what I painted. So watercolors. That's a watercolor on hot press watercolor board. Same thing there. Portraits, that was my thing, as you can kind of tell. So here's your pastels. And this is, there's no airbrush here. That is just regular old acrylic paint. That's all that is. And that was for 20 years again. That was what I did. I sold, you could see it on the blog. It's just wapeliusblogspot.com. And for the longest time I did art shows, art fairs, all that kind of stuff until that was all kind of wiped out by 9-11. And that's when we became miniature painters. And since basically 2001 that is what we've done is paint miniatures that was a quick little history review 
of miniature painting for us. Oh, thanks, Oliver. This is from Succubus Publishing. Uh, if you do a little search for them, they've the Kickstarter campaign, I think, might still be going for just a little bit. Uh, at least I think they're doing a Kickstarter. It might be over. I don't know. There's there's way too many Kickstarter campaigns that I have to try and keep track of. But this is from Succubus Publishing. That's their logo over there, that SP right here. So anytime you would look in the, in the corner of the screen for logos. So if you see a Reaper logo there, it means I'm painting a Reaper figure or a creature caster. I always try to have the appropriate logo there. Oh, thanks, Ingenis, and thanks for uh, yep, thanks for the follow and the sub too. It's appreciated. Uh, and Steiner has to head off to get some coffee and get some printers ready. Oh, no problem, Steiner. Thanks for heading in, and and folks, be sure to check out Steiner because he's streaming too. And you can see his fabulous orc trike. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I'm gonna throw out a little bit of. Good old maiden flesh here. Because my first thought was to actually take my usual. Hello, little harmons. Spark my ganja. Hey, Dizone. Thank you so much for the follow. It's appreciated. It is appreciated. Gandalf appreciates it too. I was tempted to take the. What was that? The, the contrast paints and do the, the usual thing. Uh oh. Thank you so much. And here, what Pelleas is gonna, he's gonna grab some of those, but she said, nope, this is my sparkly thing. You gotta leave. He says, man. Thank you so much for the chat. It is appreciated. Here, let's do some lighter bits here and See what we can do with that. I do need my brighter lights on that, though. And I think that'll just... It kind of drives the camera bonkers when I do that. So that's typically stuff I end up doing off-camera. I think I'll have to get some darks in between her fingers there, too. I looked them up. They did the Madeira. Okay, that's... That's it. That's what Paul was telling me earlier. Because on their website, I couldn't see anything. I looked on their website, I, I saw nothing. I'm going to throw a little pink in here, though. Oh, oh thanks, Felonious Monk. He did out oh, to Big Jim Slade. Wow. Uh, oh, that's right. He, he's going to be... Uh, He's, he's going to be doing the, not Zenalo's project, he'll be doing the Pyro Club tomorrow, well, no, later tonight, right? Thank you so much for the gift sub. Now, let's see, well, does he, he usually does his own Twitch stuff during the week, right? Usually he's broadcasting games and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of a, here, I'll show you the two. These are my two off-whites. So there is your maiden flesh there and your maggot white. And you've seen me typically just take the the contrast paints and mix these in with it to make it more of a kind of a semi-opaque, right? Which is what we did here. On her, actually, uh, <laughs> that's Leviathan blue right there, the tattoo stuff. That's a Kelian green mixed with the maggot white. And over here, this is the uh, snake bite leather mixed with the maggot white. So yeah, most this was mostly done in contrast paints mixed with these guys right here. You can watch this on the YouTube channel. Uh, figures from Artisan Guild. Almost said Artisan Designs, but I guess I'm, I still got bolt action on the brain. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm, I'm glad, Flonis, I try to squeeze in as much info as I can in every session. 
it's one of the reasons why it takes so long to prepare for a stream because most people say well why don't you just turn the camera on and I say well I, I can do that but I, I really need to have all these other implements around me to be able to because you never know when a question is going to pop up and sometimes there's certain little props that are just the perfect perfect little learning tool to have handy yeah, let's take a little bit of the that's the drying retarder get that dirt there we go that's gonna help that will help a great deal now I, I gotta go the other way here let's get some lighter stuff going on yeah the well, there's. I think they might have culled the paint herd a little bit. They might have taken out some of their paint colors, I think. I could be wrong, but I think they did take out a few. But it really, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It's As long as it's something that's off-white, it doesn't have to be the maiden flesh necessarily. It's just something that's that's reasonably close. Because, well, here you go. All right. You see this thing right here? That used to be a jar of Reaper paint. Not all that long ago, this is how all Reaper paints came. They came in jars like this. So you're, this is the, the tale that I always tell, that your favorite paint line that you love so much, eventually it's going away. Eventually that whatever paint color that you love that's going to go away it will be replaced or just completely abandoned perhaps by a company called Schmeem Schmirk Shop who knows now this is going to be nice and intense that is the clear magenta mixed with the fluorescent magenta oh my goodness that's what I was looking for for these feathers here we have found our feather color yeah, that's intense. That is nice and intense. But because it's still transparent enough, it lets that color that was already there show through just enough. Now, adapt and overcome. So the maggot white is sort of a... It can almost be like a, a cyan type of a blue. And I, it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be that exact one. It doesn't have to be that exact one. It's just something that is an off-white instead of just white. That, that's really, that's just the difference. One is actually white. Those two are just kind of white-ish, I guess. Uh, let's see, this is why I keep the color match spreadsheet handy. Yeah, I, it's, I just keep thinking how many different iterations of some stuff has GW been through since we were last going to the, the battle bunker and we could actually get the jars of paint there in the store. Now this time, I'm going to actually take some of the that's the maiden flesh. We'll mix that with our our little mix we got here. Let's see if we can get a couple of lighter. Yeah. I don't want these to be as, as bright as the her little dress type thing. Gee whiz, I think I haven't actually shown some of the other ones that I've got prepped here since the very beginning of this so let's we'll grab some of those here so here's some of the other ones that i've got prepped so there's that one i think that one's called florence nightingale or nightingale or something like that then you've got this one here we've got another archer over here and then we've got this pair again not quite sure what the deal is with these guys then there's this one. There we go. There's this one here. And I've got this one prepped. And there's a couple other ones. 
But I just thought we could have fun with uh, some of these here. Just move these guys off to the side. Uh, Steel Rebel asked, does freehand with oils, do you do it thin over thick or vice versa? Sometimes It depends. If you are painting the freehand over something that is thick, you darn well better make it thin. And if you're painting it over something that's thin, you better make it thick. Otherwise, he ain't going to stick. Which is why we'll show you this. So you can see the, the lettering that was done there. The paint that was already there was relatively thick. So we just thin that down. Now on some of the other stuff that we've done with our oil. Here we go. Uh, let's grab some of these guys. So here, those were actually a bit thicker because the paint was thinner. The paint that those were painted on was thinner. Here's another example right here. This is one. Now there, the paint was thicker, so all of the freehand designs were done much thinner. Uh, I think, okay, then we got all that chat stuff set up. Now this is one more example here too. So you can see all of these little veiny things right here. That was done with very thin down paint because what was on top of it was thicker. So we didn't want to go thick over thick. So hopefully, Stila, that answers the question there. We'll get our couple more highlights here on the little feathery things on the top of her head here. Might even go a little lighter. Again, these are too too bright. They'll just compete with all the other areas like the her dress over here. We don't want that. We just want them to have a little shade. Um, who knows, I might even do some darker shading over the top of these again. But uh, that's good enough for right now. Oh, there's there's the link, Steiner. Thank you so much for putting that link up there. So that is the link to the Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, you know what? I kind of like this being a little lighter now. Okay, that's good to go. That was just, and all the stuff that I was doing, I spent so much time trying to get these things prepped and everything ready for this. I did not have time to go find the stupid link to the Kickstarter. Normally I have that kind of ready to go, but that was not going to be today. Now hopefully the campaign's still going for a couple of days yet. I'm going to get a little bit lighter right in here. Let's do that sleeve. We got to... I think catch a couple of highlights on these little beads right here. We haven't done that yet either. I think, oh, we never did finish up our flowers over here. Let's do some of those. Just get some water into this. Uh, let's see, I was painting yesterday, getting used to thickness with oils. It, it that is definitely to be that is definitely to be expected it, it will happen to you and it you're going to change even when you say okay i've got the oils figured out as you keep using them your it's going to change it well what i mean is you'll you'll find new and different ways uh new and different approaches with those it's just a matter of trying those. So after I get these couple of flowers in here, I'll show you what I mean. And this is something we were showing in the last stream when I was working with the oils. And I'll show you things from April. I'll show you things from June and then something from late July. And they may not, they won't look any different, but their significance as far as for me massively, massively different. So I'm just going to try and sneak one more flower down in here if I might. 
this is where the synthetic brush comes in handy. Ah, where's my, there's my magenta over there. Let's just get our little dots in the center here. Some of these. Another one there. I think we got three more. We need to get the dots in. There we go. <clears throat> so it would be the tail of three cavalry. Nice and bright there. So we'll go with with him. We'll go with. Is this the right one? No, this is the right one. We'll go with him, and we'll go with him. So I did this one here in April. This was done in oils. And then I did this one. This is more like May, actually. Yeah, this is late May. The approach on this was different than the approach on this guy. And then the approach on this one, just earlier this week, Monday of this week, this was very different than the approach on this guy. Even though the horses pretty much kind of look the same, as far as their color goes, this was a very different approach. I probably used more paint on this one guy here by twice than I did on this much larger horse. So that is the difference, again, with the, just with me, as I use the oils. It changes every time I use these things. It constantly evolves. And that's going to happen for you, too. You will find yourself using thinner and thinner paints. And it's just going to happen kind of naturally. It'll just happen. You, you may not even notice it. You might not even notice it happening. And we'll get ourselves more lights here. I think, yeah. I'm just going to say that's probably the same as... Uh, the rest of that dress. I might actually sneak in some gold type things or something that's not just various shades of red, purple, or blue. Actually, maybe if this almost has a little bit of yellow hint to it, it sort of reflects what's going on there. Yeah, that kind of helps. And actually what might help too is... Uh, Get a little orangey reflection here on these these guys. Yeah, that was actually the fluorescent magenta mixed with the clear yellow. So you don't necessarily have to have all the different fluorescents. You know, sometimes you can mix those, especially with just regular paints, to make something maybe that you get like the fluorescent orange here. Now we've got our smaller brush. We can start to, I think, refine some of these over. Yeah, let's do that. How far do I want that to extend? Maybe out to about there. Get a little more of my clear yellow in here. So that's just uh, actually the clear yellow mixed with the clear magenta of all things. Let's highlight a couple of our bamboo things. Now, not too much, but maybe say like the light's catching just a bit of that. On our foot over here. Uh, oh, thanks, Lady B. Yeah, this is... Uh, I don't really, well, I, I don't know if I've ever really painted any kind of anime stuff whatsoever, anime themed. So this is very different for me, which is always, well, it's just like the Wild West Exodus stuff. So where is that? Yeah, this was, it was just as different as this was for me doing the, the Wild West Exodus stuff. That was a big, big change. And that, oh, that's one of our chat rewards. That's right. Yes, you can see Wappleville in all of its glory. And some of the miniatures, too. 
Now I'm thinking I will, now that I've got my smaller brush here, I haven't really had the smaller brush to work on some of my object source lighting on our clothes here, so I'll take advantage of that. Again, actually the magenta and the yellow makes a pretty darn good orange substitute. I just didn't feel like grabbing the orange fluorescent paint. It was just sheer laziness. There was no calculated anything there. Oh, Numbskull has to head off. It's 4.30 a.m. here too. Catch you later. That is why I, I chose to just tackle one miniature here since, oh gosh, what is it? Four, so about 14 hours? No. Yeah, about 14 hours from now, that is when I'm going to have to do the Aces of Painting Challenge. So I'll be painting in oils, and we'll be painting, uh, whoops, not just this guy here. Yeah, let's get our camera straightened back out again. But all of this junk here, we got, all of this stuff has to be painted in oils. And we got 75 minutes, apparently, to paint it all. So that's going to be a fun challenge. That's going to be a fun challenge. It will even test the limits of the oils itself. It's a darn good thing that oils take 75% of the painting time away. or close to it. Yeah, that needs a... Oh, what the heck. We'll just go a little... Maybe... Nope, nope. That's too much. Gonna go back here, magenta, turn that more into an orange. And oh look, conveniently it's also it's the same magenta that we used to build up this color to begin with, so not bad. Let's get some of this on that skull. We haven't messed around with the side of this skull over here either. Maybe not quite so yellow. Uh, let's see, we're calling her Mickey. Um, she does have some kind of... I forget what her actual name is. It was something. I don't know if it sounded anime or not. I, I think the Mickey, that definitely has more of an anime feel to it, that's for sure. Let's see, anything else? Uh, rehab's been really hard this week. Been over pushing yourself. So, Grego, has, uh, has the physical therapy been getting in the way of the miniature painting then? Well, hopefully not. I mean, that's never that's never a happy thing. I am going to try and get... Since it would just a little bit of a brighter... Orange there, maybe some more of the, and it, as transparent as I can make it, there we go. And let's get some on the back of the skull here. And then on the front part, we'll take some of our, some of our yellow, mix it with this, whatever this is. I think it was some, some kind of like vampiric whatever. But it's going to be used to lighten up some parts of the skull here. And that's just one of those GW skulls. Nothing terribly great. I'm almost out of my Green Stuff World skulls, which I really like because there's so many different shapes and types. You've got kind of the, the orc size or an ogre size and many different sizes of those. I'm going to get some more of my maiden flesh out here. Because the rest of it's mostly got magenta in it. We don't need a fluorescent magenta skull. At least not at this point just yet. Got to make sure that the ambient light doesn't get too much darker than, well... Oh, look at that color. still good. That's that Briar Rose. That's actually a f interesting color. We're going to use that to 
Let's get some of this other bamboo maybe a little light. I don't want it to be too much like our fiery bamboo here, so... Do I have some? Yes, good. I've got some green. That's what I'm looking for. So that's going to make it look a little bit grayish, just like on the skull here, too. Yeah, we just took some green and started painting some of that on the skull. Sort of a grayish green here. Throw some of this on our bamboo. And now that starts to give us some of that color between all the reddish glow here. It starts to get green, and but we don't see it here. When we do this, when we take away that color, all you just see is it's lighter. So let's let's do let's do some film noir. We haven't done that in a while. Uh, let's see, I haven't been able to do anything since uh, the stroke of Christmas. Been working hard to get a stage to hold a miniature. Now, uh, I'm assuming that it's it's too difficult to do the thing where you know you brace this arm and you brace this arm and then you use them together. Oh, um, you know. Ah, I don't know if one of these would help at all. It's going to be hard to get this under the camera. But this is one of these flexible tripod things. And for Drax, we were actually thinking of, you know, you set this up here. Sorry, my light's kind of in the way. So you would set it up like this, and now my arm is just sitting on that. It's 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 just literally sitting... On the f and it's flexible here, so see I can I can change the shape of that. And right now my arm is just resting on this. So actually, if I needed to paint something oils right now, so this hand is totally free. This hand is resting on that, uh, and it's funny seeing this in black and white. It's kind of like a comedy there. So I and this these things are really cheap. It's just a camera tripod, maybe I don't know, eighteen bucks or something like that. Okay, what were we doing? Oh, yes, yes, we got to get in some something a little more interesting here than just there's just a bunch of dark brown. There. There's really nothing else. So we're gonna give it this little bit of green here, which you can't see, but you can see it on the palette. So see over here, green. Working some of this green in here. Maybe even have it be a little bit darker. And then I'll bring back the color, and hopefully you'll be able to see. Especially over here. So watch what happens when we bring our color back. So now you get to see some of that green that we see the green we added to the skull there. And that's what we've been doing in all these other areas around here, is just adding some of this green. Well, it's greenish. It's more like a gray that has a little hint of green in it. That's what it's doing out there. And I'm going to use that up here. Again, something that's not just more shades of reds and magenta. It's still pretty darn dark. And yeah, this is right on top of some of the brightest orange and yellow. But now we're actually gray literally graying that down. But it makes this stuff look more intense by that being less intense and cooler. That's you, you've got value contrast and you've got color contrast. You have saturation contrast. There are many types of contrast besides just the one that you think about all the time, which is the value contrast. I'm going to work some green into the skull there just to have something different. And now some of the 
Now this is where your detail gets a little bit softer because I didn't even know there was some kind of a line there. I just couldn't see it. This is actually some of my purple right here. I think I'm going to solidify some of these. I just didn't realize what that was at first. I think it might have been easier to see if I had all of my lights on, but again, I have to keep most of them off to make it visible for you. Uh, okay, I'm glad that might work. Oh, hey, Yipik, how's it going? Welcome back. So oh, that's you you caught the uh, the oil demo on the horses probably right the, the other day. Down the was that about the five or six hour marathon into until seven o'clock in the morning so hopefully that might be a good idea for it because it's it's not expensive and well you know you'd have a camera tripod if anything else you'd have a nice kind of cheap tripod that you could do something else with i know i've been thinking about that for paintings that were like the caracalila bust remember i I couldn't rest my hand on it when I was doing the other side. So something like that could be very handy for, well, I guess a, a number of things. Ah, okay. Now, I just got that on Amazon also. It was it should be somewhere like 18 to 20 dollars tops, I think. And it is it that one in particular, the little feet on it were were rubberized so that it wouldn't slide around on you too much. Ah, I like, okay, I'm liking this with the purple there, toning that down. Uh, let's see, oh, when a code, oh, thanks, thanks. Uh, we were just use it. we're trying to show off for the, uh, your Windsor Newton comments here, but this is the other thing too. So we're talking about how oils are actually way nicer on your brushes. See that? That big pile of junk in the ferrule there, that just doesn't happen with the oils. It happens with the acrylics, though, unfortunately. Because as soon as you take them off the palette, they're drying in your brush. It's just, it's the nature of the beast. It is what it is. And I might get some slight, yeah, I still have some of my slightly lighter blue here. I think I might also hit some of the petals here. Not in every single one, but maybe the ones where the lighter band of color is here. I thought it could just be a nice little fun, not super complicated freehand. Now, some of the free hands that I do are a little bit more complicated than others. Like, okay, so this was, that was a wee bit more of a complicated free hand than, than what's going on here. This is just simple, basic flowers. And taking that to a little more of an extreme here, let's see if we can't find ourselves our we're going to scroll down here, find our dull amroth. So this is where the freehand starts to get a little bit, uh, yeah. So each horse had its own heraldry, which also then had to be repeated on each of these guys here because, well, in Lord of the Rings, guys can be unseated. Now, let's see, we can go to our... Actually, the Harad army also had some... Yeah, there was a lot of freehand on those. See the designs on the back of the cloaks there? That was a little bit more complex. It's a little bit more complex. Well, then the Cypher Lords, that's where the freehand really got much more complex. And, yeah, we can show you a, just a wee little example here. So, yeah, freehand can be more elaborate sometimes than other times. And this is one of my army painting series here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I still hate dealing with the oils more than the drying of the acrylic paint. 
again, if it's if it's a medium that you don't like, you just it's an experiment. You tried it. I will say, like I just showed you those those three horses. I approach the oils very differently now than I did when I first started using them. I've been using them for four years. Two weeks from now, I'll be using those oil paints very differently than I just used them yesterday. I'm sure of it. You know what? I'm going to go even darker here. So I'm going to take some of that phthalo green. We'll mix that with our... That's good. Ooh, there we go. Almost like a... Almost like a very deep jade. Yep, that's what it needed there too. Need a little bit of dark there. Uh, okay, I think we got just some... Uh, I have acrylic inks and paints, so no need to get more. Yeah, like, well, um, you heard me just uh, not long ago saying, hey, you know, if you just gave me about a dozen of the Reaper clear and liner paints, I wouldn't need anything else. I, I could, especially as far as acrylic paints go, oil paints, that, that starter set of 10, I could just use that forever and not need any more oil paints as far as different colors go. I get, I've gotten the different colors because they can do some different things and they make it more efficient, like those horses. It was way more efficient for me to paint some of those horses in different colors because I, I, I've invested more in additional oil paints. But not everybody needs to paint hundreds of miniatures every month like I do. Uh, me too, but I think I found my whole gra holy grail for now. Yeah, for me, it's always, like I say, the holy grail for me is, is the clear and liner paints. Now, for other folks, it, it's it's got to be something different because they have a tough time just getting those, period. You know, I'm going to get some separation between these panels. They're just some all-out, straight-out separation. I'm going to go a little bit lighter with my purple right in here. We need some more separation with these panels. I think that could be fun. And I'm just going to toss in some maiden flesh there I think we're all caught up chat wise there yeah see that just it needed that little bit needed that little bit there So tempted to mess around more with the fit, but we'll leave that. We'll leave that alone. You know what? I might actually grab a little bit of my maggot white. We'll throw that over here. And it is sort of a super, super light cyan color. Just whatever the deal is with this little arrow that she's got in her hand. I'm not even quite sure if these are supposed to be feathers or not, or what the deal is with this thing. I have no idea. Basically, unless it's bolt action, I never know what the intended purpose behind any miniature is by any company. Uh, that is why I love my bolt action so much. Because I understand what all of it is. Now I'm going to see if I can pop in some eyes on this. It would be easier with the oils, no doubt about that. I wonder, here, let's see what we can do here. Just grab some of our... Again, a brush that usually works fantastic for oils, probably not going to do so well with the acrylics, but we'll give it a shot. Yep, that boy with the oils, that's the other thing, is that this brush with the oils is a fantastic, amazing one here brush. It is entirely and completely unusable for acrylics, sadly. 
That's just kind of how it is. Is that on screen? I think it is. This may be so small you may not even be able to see what the heck I'm doing right here. And of course oils can be thinner than water can just because capillary action and all that other fun stuff. Uh, let's see, like the kind of basically technical pace. Do, 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 do. So I have been, like I said, I've been using the, since 15 months, 13 months ago, I've been using the contrast paints for those folks that can't get their hands on the clear and liner paints from Reaper. And we've been able to do some interesting stuff with those. Did a lot of the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures. But I think that was probably where I first started to use those, actually. It was on those Song of Ice and Fire miniatures. Now, I'm going to see if I can't get me some darker colors in between these fingers here. Okay, that's it. Maybe even a little bit darker on her hand over here, and then maybe some lighter skin tone there. Uh, let's see, glaze filter over a mechanic that, the, to me, the actually, the, the contrast paints mixed with the metal medium is really fun. That works very nicely, too, I have to say. Let's see if we can't give this some lighter knuckles right here. Just like a, some, there we go. There was just something stuck there that was creating some mayhem. That's gone now. Now, oh, that's the other thing I need to do is get some lighter colors. Uh, there's like this little hair tie thing right here. We have not gotten our lights on. Okay, let's do the... Other one on the other side now, if we can. Let's get some brighter things here on whatever this is. I almost keep wanting to call this a kimono, even though it's really not. We can get some of our light there. Maybe a couple of highlights on the top of that lamp there. Or lantern, I should say. And I can still do lighter stuff on the skull. I, I never like to have these be the, the bleached bone type of thing. It just... Unless it's out in the middle of a desert or something like that, that's about the only way you would get that sort of effect going on. 